When God closes a door, He opens a window. That sounds really encouraging, but the question is, is it biblical? Is that something we should be saying as Christians? Don't go anywhere, because that's what we're going to talk about today. Hey everybody, welcome to Thinking Out Loud with PJ. It is my goal on this channel to help you think different and help you think biblically. So that's what we're gonna do today. The question is, should I tell somebody when God closes a door, he opens a window? We wanna think biblically about that. And I can tell you this, first of all, that did not come from the Bible. You're not gonna find that anywhere in the Bible. That came from the movie, The Sound of Music. It is a movie quote that has gone on and on, and we say it as Christian. Here's what I want us to do first. I want us to think about this realistically. If you see this quote, what do you usually see? You see it on this very pi picturesque, artistic window, and, uh, and, and the quote is there written in nice, pretty lettering. But that's not the reality. That's the reality we've presented for ourselves. But let's think about it, guys. If a door is closed and locked and you're looking for a window, then aren't you breaking in when you go in a window? I mean, that's just generally not the prettiest sight. You're, you're finding some window that's unlocked. You've looked around the building and now you're, you're going and you have no idea what kind of room you're coming into. It, it, we're not just walking through this massive, wonderful window. We are generally breaking the law if the door is locked and we're going in the window. So why would we say that as Christians? Well, that's really not why we shouldn't say this as Christians, but we do have some biblical reasons why we probably shouldn't encourage somebody that when God closes a door, he opens a window. The first thing we wanna think about before we tell anybody that is that God might have closed the door for their own good. We forget that. Psalm 16, 9 says, The heart of man plans his ways, but the Lord orders his steps. We might think God is opening this door and then he closes it. So what do we do? We start looking for this window. We've decided we wanted this thing so bad that we just start looking for a window. And we're willing to climb through a window into a room that God has said, no, I don't want you in there. I don't want you to walk through this door. You might have planned your way, but I am superseding here as a sovereign God and I am ordering your steps. When we think this way, we make it all about us. We think often that God wants the same things we want. If God's closing a door, then maybe we should rethink, reevaluate, and say, Lord, what is it that you do want from me? When we start thinking this way, we make it all about us. And that's where we go wrong as Christians. Sure, God wants to bless us, and God has great plans for us. But those plans and those blessings all tie into his greater scheme and his, his greater plan. I've said this before. Somewhere I read the illustration, and I don't even know where I found it. But if I were to bring you in and show you about a minute's worth of video from, a, say, a four- or five-hour-long movie you wouldn't really be able to tell me much of what was going on, would you? If I sat you down and said, all right, who was the main character? You might be able to tell me that. But you're not going to tell me the whole plot line watching a minute or 30 seconds of a four or five hour long movie. That's who we are, though, in God's plan. We're dropped into this time that God has created, which is small compared to eternity. And then we think we know what God's plan is instead of remembering that you and I are, are a part. We're here serving a part of a, a bigger plan. And so when God closes a door, we say, well, maybe that's uh, not best for me. We don't feel like that's best for us, but it is best for us. It's best for us because it's best for God's plan. And we don't know what he has next for us. He, we don't know what he's planning far beyond our own life. If you just take some time and read Acts 16, I did a video about that earlier and you can find it here on my channel. But God closed the door for Paul more than once as he was trying to get into Asia Minor. He wanted to go to Ephesus. He wanted to go to these places and God closed the door. It literally says the Holy Spirit forbade him to go there. And in that moment, God didn't open any windows for him to get in. 
God kept closing doors to guide him because it wasn't about Paul, even though what Paul wanted was what God wanted. It was about God's bigger plan. When God starts closing doors, we just need to take some time and sit down and reflect. Maybe spend some time in Psalm 86 verse 11. The psalmist says, teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. And, and we just need to sometimes ask the Lord, what are you doing? What, do, what is it that you want me to do? What's the next thing that I should be doing here since you closed this door? Rather than me trying to climb in a window, why did you close that door? Why did you close it for me? What is next? Sometimes we don't ever find out why God closed the door, but there are times in my life where I've looked back on a door that I badly wanted God to open and he closed it for me. And I look back and I'm thankful. God has our lives under control. When he closes a door, don't go looking for a window. Don't encourage somebody that God's gonna open a window. Encourage them and say, well, why did God close that door? What does he have for you next? Why didn't he want you going down that path? You see, the problem is we have all of these great Christian cliches. We don't know where they came from, but we start to believe them. And then they begin to shape our thinking. We form a worldview through these Christian cliches that we have, and they're not biblical. What we need to do is make sure we're thinking different, we're thinking biblically so that we can form our worldview through scripture. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please hit the like button. That helps far more than you probably think that it does. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, that encourages me when I see you subscribe. I post videos every week, so make sure you hit the bell so that you don't miss my next video. We'll see you then.